Welcome. My name is Piet van Pfeiffer. I practice endodontics in Johannesburg, and I'm also a part-time lecturer at the University of Pretoria, South Africa. I want to share with you a challenging clinical case where a single wave one gold file was used for root canal preparation, and the SDR flowable bulkful resin material was used to create good coronal seal after endodontic treatment. The patient, a 16-year-old male, presented with a non-vital mandibular left first molar during orthodontic treatment due to a leaking occlusal restoration. The buccal gingiva was swollen and he presented with a periodontal pocket of about 11 mm in this area, as indicated by the arrows on the slide. A preoperative periapical radiograph revealed a large periapical area and it was decided to take a CBCT scan to determine the extent of the pathology and the prognosis of this tooth. A sagittal view of the CBCT scan demonstrated two large periapical radiolucencies around the mesial and distal roots, with the distal area extending right up into the furcation. This slide shows different slices of the CBCT scan through the actual plane emphasizing the extent of the periapical pathology. A 3D reconstructed view of the CBCT scan and a coronal view also clearly illustrated the loss of the buccal bone plate, exposing the coronal two-thirds of the mesial and distal roots. Despite the clinical and radiographic findings, it was decided to go ahead with treatment and to try and save this tooth. The previous restoration was removed and an access cavity prepared. Four root canal orifices were detected and the canals negotiated to patency using a size 10k file. It was noted that the size 10k file felt very loose in the canals and it was possible to take even a size 15 and 20k file to full working length without any problem. A size 25k file was the first file that felt a bit tight at full working length, but still loose in the coronal aspects of the root canal systems. A size medium, wave 1 gold reciprocating file was selected for root canal preparation, taking into account the size of the root canals. The access cavity was filled with 3.5% sodium hypochlorite, and here you can see the preparation of the Mijo buckle and the Mijo lingual root canals using the single wave one gold reciprocating instrument. The reciprocating wave one gold instruments provide the clinician with the following advantages. First, the improved design and metallurgy results in instruments that demonstrates more cutting efficiency, flexibility, and nearly complete elimination of file fracture if the instruments are used single use. Secondly, in approximately 80 to 85% of clinical cases, the clinician will only need a single wave one gold file to complete canal instrumentation. And finally, the single file shaping technique with the wave one gold medium file as illustrated in this case report, provided us with safety, simplicity, and a superior result. After root canal preparation, four size medium wave one gold gut aperture points were fitted into the prepared root canals, and the fit of the cones were verified radiographically. The canals were filled with 17% EDTA, and the solution was activated with the eddy irrigation device from VDW for approximately 2 minutes to remove the smear layer. This was followed by a final irrigation step using heated 3.5% sodium hypochlorite in the endovac system. After irrigation, the canals were obturated with the gutta percha points, pulp canal sealer, using the calamus dual obturation unit in a continuous wave of condensation mode. This periapical radiograph illustrates the immediate post-operative result of the obturation of the root canals.
Here you can see the occlusal view of the tooth showing at class 1 access cavity after observation of the root canal system. The remaining occlusal fissures were cleaned out using a small fissure rotomy burr and the entire axis cavity was debrided by means of air polishing with bicarbonate soda delivered by the aquaabrasion unit to ensure removal of any root canal cement remnants and also to expose fresh ten a fresh dentine surface receptive for bonding. A contaminated dentine surface will result in poor dentine bond streams resulting in possible coronal leakage when the cavity is restored with a composite resin material. This slide shows a magnified view of the pulp chamber before and after air, air polishing using bicarbonate soda powder in the aquaabrasion unit. It is clear that the clean and refreshed cavity surface on the right hand side will produce higher dentine bond streams and also improve the marginal seal upon the restoration of the axis cavity. The enamel and dentine was etched with phosphoric acid for 15 seconds before the etchant was rinsed off thoroughly with water and lightly air dried with compressed air. A micro brush saturated with prime and bond etch and rinse was used to infuse the bonding resin into the etch enamel and dentine surfaces for approximately 10 seconds before it was light cured for 20 seconds of the evaporation of the solvent. Here we can see this step being performed clinically. Bonding resin application, you can see we infuse it into the etched enamel and dentine, followed by solvent evaporation, and finally the light curing step. The next step is to fill up the bulk of the cavity with SDR flowable bulk fill material. It is very important to make sure that the delivery tip of this material is placed directly onto the pulp floor, otherwise voids will be incorporated when we dispense this material. If the tip is too short to reach the floor, especially in deep axis cavities, it is possible to pull the tip out with orthodontic plier and extend it for a few millimeters. Here you can see the extended tip makes direct contact with the pulp floor before we dispense the material. A thin layer of approximately 2 mm of SDR flowable bulk resin can then be dispensed onto the pulp floor covering the exposed gutta percha material and then light cured for 40 seconds. Let's look at this step on video. Here I'm dispensing the SDR material, making sure that I incorporate no voids, leave the material to self level and then cure it for 40 seconds. I'm curing 40 seconds at this stage because of the depth of the cavity and the distance of the SDR material away from the light. This is followed by a 4mm increment of SDR flowable bulk full resin material. It is dispensed and left undisturbed to self level before it is light cured for 20 seconds. Here we can see this protocol clinically. A 4mm bulk fill layer of SDR is dispensed on top of the previous layer. It is left to slightly self level before it is light cured for 20 seconds. Here we can see about 85% of the pulp chamber was filled with SDR flowable bulk fill resin material, leaving approximately 2mm of space to cap it with a conventional composite resin material for a more aesthetic result. When filling an endodontic axis cavity with composite resin, we are dealing with a very high C-factor configuration where the shrinkage stress will be very high. The C-factor is determined by dividing the number of unbonded surfaces into the number of bonded surfaces as you can see on this slide. You clearly see that in most endodontic axis cavities, we will have a C-factor of 4 when we do the calculation. Here is an example of an endodontic axis cavity that was filled in bulk with composite resin and we can clearly see the evidence of coronal leakage that happened over a period of time. 
This is the reason why I prefer to use SDR in deep class 1 access cavities and also because of its proven and reliable adhesion to dentin in C-factor situations due to the low shrinkage stress of the SDR material. The unique and patented formulation of SDR leads to a controlled polymerization process. A modulator was included, helping the monomers to form a more relaxed network. This compensates the effect of volume shrinkage, leading to less shrinkage stress. Therefore, SDR can be placed in 4mm layers, avoiding cumbersome and time-consuming layering techniques. In a study by Van Ende et al. 2013, they demonstrated that the microtensile bond strength decreased significantly when class 1 cavities were filled in 4mm bulk increments. Conventional flowable and regular viscosity composite placed in 4mm increments in an axis cavity resulted in a very high percentage of pretest failure. The SDR bulk fill material was the only product that maintained its tensile bond strength against the cavity walls in all the samples tested. This excellent result can be attributed to the fact that shrinkage stress against the walls is only 1.4 MPa for this material. Several studies have also confirmed the importance of coronal seal and endodontic success. In this study by Trobe in 1995, they demonstrated that coronal leakage can reduce endodontic success from 90 to 18 percent, clearly showing us how important it is to create good coronal seal. Let's get back to our case report. The last step for restoration of this access cavity is to cover the SDR material with a normal regular viscosity composite resin. On this video you can see that the SDR material was capped by applying ceramic Swirtec composite resin, shade A1, using the successive cast buildup technique. This figure demonstrates the aesthetically pleasing restoration that was obtained after finishing and polishing of the occlusal restoration. The new ceramic Swirtec material contains primary glass fillers with a mean size of 0.6 microns to create granulates in a mean size of 15 microns, as you can see on the right hand side of the slide. These granulates are produced in a spray drying process, resulting in nice rounded swears. This innovative filler technology, Swirtec, improves the mechanical strength and the handling properties of this material. In my experience, ceramic Swirtec is less technique sensitive compared to other composite resin materials. Firstly, it is easy to select the correct shade due to the cloud shade concept of the material. Secondly, the material allows for simple and controlled application of the composite paste into the cavity because it does not stick to the instruments, allowing excellent adaptation to the cavity walls and sculptability. And lastly, the material can be polished very fast to a very high level of luster to produce restorations with natural aesthetics. This slide shows periapical radiographs, a parallel and a 30 degrees distal angulation of the tooth after 3 months. Note the excellent adaptation of the SDR material to the pulp floor and the walls, providing good coronal seal. At 6 months, the restoration appeared to be functional and retained the polished surface. Periapical radiographs also demonstrated good periapical healing. A follow-up CBCT scan also revealed good healing of the periapical pathology. This slide shows sagittal slices of the before and after view, coronal slices, as well as a 3D constructed view, clearly demonstrating good healing. If you look at the 3D constructed view at the bottom, you can also clearly see that the buccal bone plate is busy regenerating. On this slide one can see a comparison between before and after views in the actual direction at different levels and clearly indicating good healing.
Here you can see the coronal slice. Here's a midroot slice and a slice in the apical third. It is clear in this case that adequate endodontic treatment and good coronal seal promotes favorable healing. So, thank you for your time and I hope that you will also create many successful case reports in your practice by using the materials illustrated in this video. Thank you.